welcome. Let's talk about media and communication. In the early chaotic days of COVID-19, we all remember those televised government press conferences. And today we explore how newspapers in five European countries covered them. I have invited Lore Hayek to tell us more about how journalists behaved and how these briefings shaped public opinion. Rodrigo Silva, as always, let's talk about media and communication. Laura, welcome to our episode. Thanks for the invitation. So, Laura, the pandemic created a unique situation where traditional media like newspapers regained their importance as reliable sources of information. But you also mentioned in the article that the way government press conferences influenced newspaper commentary, opinion pieces, hasn't been extensively explored. So that's what prompted you to start this research. Yeah, exactly. So we have a, this stems from a broader research project where we examine all these COVID press conferences because we had these, this unique uh, communication situation that governments across the world resorted back to more like classical traditional media, like television to inform their publics like directly and at once on, on the measure and on measures and on the crisis containment strategies that they would take. And in the next step, so we, there are a couple of papers coming out on, on, on these aspects, but in the next step, I wanted to look at what did journalists do at this crucial time and how did they particularly in the comments and editorial sections of newspapers how did they react and analyze these government press conferences? So what did journalists do? Let us uh, hear the main findings. So one, one effect that, that we frequently find in crisis is this rally around the flag effect, which means that the public or political opponents or also uh, journalists are not critical against the government anymore are not opposing the government anymore, but they they side with the government and they help them or they, they support them. So the, the, my first hypothesis was to find to, to check exactly that did a rally around the flag effect occur among journalists. And what I did find in these five countries: Austria, France, Germany, Spain, and the United Kingdom, is that actually in quality newspapers, in broadsheet newspapers, we found exactly that effect. So. Journalists in quality newspapers wrote sentences like, the government has done a lot of things right, the, the, the containment of the crisis was a success and stuff like that. In tabloid newspapers, I did not uh, find this effect. So tabloid newspapers from the beginning were more reluctant, more critical towards everything that governments did during the pandemic. I'm kind of curious to know about practical implications of these findings? One practical implication is, I think, that we saw in this first phase of the pandemic that many people, even people who are, who are critical towards traditional media and who in the past have tended to use more alternative media sources to get a lot of information from social media or from other channels, that in the time of the crisis, they returned back to towards traditional media because in the end, traditional media do seem more reliable for many people. So for example, in Austria, where I come from, the main news show on television had like a surge in viewer numbers that was incredible, like numbers like they had in the 1980s or something like that. So what I think is that we realized that during such a crisis, traditional newspapers and journalists do also have a certain responsibility because they they take up a bit of this shared responsibility of informing the public, of creating some kind of public consent on how to fight the crisis. And I think what we see in this first phase is that journalists, editors, commentators did exactly that. So they, they supported the government, they urged people to really stay at home and and do everything that they were asked for. And this is also due to the complexity of the situation that really this, this function of journalism to explain, to help people understand what is happening was really crucial in that phase of the crisis. 
you told us about the rally around the flag effect, which you already explained, and the this difference between the quality and tabloid newspapers on the reaction. And you indicate also in the article that this effect uh, requires further studying, correct? So what's ahead of us to follow up on your research wise? Well, I think what's ahead of us is like everybody who does research on what's around COVID-19, we try to not only look back, but also try to make some implications for, for the future. And obviously, I mean, if a similar crisis, if another pandemic will happen in the future, I think many things will be very different from COVID-19 because of everything that has happened and because of everything that we have learned. And particularly in terms of government communication and introduction of certain measures, I think this is going to be extremely difficult because people are now so skeptical after all the vaccination discussions that were going on in, in several countries. So again, I think the cooperation between media and between communicators, and I don't only mean journalists, I'm also talking about, for example, influencers with a large followership on TikTok or Instagram, it's going to be a crucial point for governments in the future that they have a good network of communicators, of people who are like opinion leaders to find compliance and support among the population for whatever is needed in the next crisis. Yeah. And I would like, you did it a bit already, but you, I would like to know your also your personal reflection on these findings. So the what struck you the most, what, so what about your personal reflections. But before that, well, I will use my power as moderator. So this study focused on an initial phase of the pandemic. So how do you think that the relationship between these government press conferences and media coverage and probably other actors might evolve over a longer crisis, especially with this thing of this effect of regaining the confidence for traditional media. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And then you can, if you want, jump straight to your thoughts. I think I, already in our, in our sample, which is from early March to May or June 2020, already in that sample, we see that towards the end, this rally around the flag effect has vanished. Yeah, so then media are quite uh, critical towards the government. If we remember, that was then around Easter time, it was becoming warmer, less people were infected, and nobody was really sure why do we have to do all of that anymore? Why can't I travel across the border and stuff like that? So I think, and obviously, I mean, with the progress of the crisis over the years, as certain news outlets, and particularly Tabloid uh, news outlets uh, like Boulevard Press, they opposed everything that the government did in that respect. Because in the population, there was a growing reluctance against all of these uh, measures and also trust in government uh, came, came down and so on. My personal thoughts, I mean, it's what I said in the last answer is, I think we saw that this crisis, apart from being a health crisis, it was also a crisis in many other sectors, and that includes communication and governance in a broad sense. So the need for governments and deciders to be transparent about what's happening, to think ahead, to let the public know not only what's going to happen tomorrow, but what's going to happen in two weeks, I mean, if this is possible, I think this is going to be crucial for people to to consent and to support government measures. So communication is key to to managing a, a public crisis. Well, you kind of did that uh, very well now, but if you could, in no more than two sentences, sum up this whole conversation. So two sentences that are the audience remember about this talk, what would it be? Yeah, the main finding of my paper is that leading journalists supported governments in their articles during COVID-19 and that leading news coverage and leading public communication is a crucial point for overcoming a crisis. Right. Perfect. Lotte, thank you very much. Thank you. This podcast is powered by Cogitatio Press. You can listen to this episode on the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website on Cogitatio Press YouTube channel and whatever gets your podcast.